Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Stig Nilans Andersen presentation about the impact of fixed link projects on population development. Uh, just for your information, this session will be recorded. Uh, your names will not be visible uh, unless you ask questions in uh, uh, spoken form or in writing at the end of the presentation. So, uh, Stig, uh, you can just start. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Stig Nilan Andersen. I work at the Norwegian Public Roads Administration and uh, also doing a PhD at Antenu in Trondheim. What I'm going to talk about today is uh, first a bit about the background for the project I'm involved in and uh, talk a bit about how project assessment of fixed link project is done today and uh, some possible limitations of the methods. Then I will uh, present a case study we have done and uh, show the research questions of uh, the study and uh, present some of the methods we have used and the main results from the study. <clears throat> and in the end, I will uh, talk a bit about what we are doing now and what we are planning to do in future research in our project. Before we start uh, with that, I would just like to present the rest of my PhD group. I'm working in a group together with my uh, supervisor, Trude Tashat, at Antenu, and also uh, Maria Diaz Gutierrez, which is uh, also at uh, Antenu in Trondheim. Eivind Levik Nilsson is uh, sitting in uh, Rambel, is working in Rambel in uh, Tönsberg, and myself, uh, which uh, which I'm working in uh, Bergen. And uh, we have had a close cooperation uh, during our PhDs. We started almost at the same time. And we have uh, worked closely, uh, at least in the beginning, when this was quite new for us. And uh, But now, uh, when we uh, reached the end of uh, our PhDs. We have focused on uh, slightly different areas. I uh, worked a lot with uh, the population development of fixed links. Evin has focused a bit more on uh, the impact on firms, while Maria has, uh, has worked a lot with uh, the perceptions people have when of different aspects of fixed links. And uh, even though we have sit, we sit at uh, different locations, we have uh, had uh, meetings, Skype meetings every uh, week at least, or several times each week. So we worked closely together. Okay, then a bit about uh, the background of uh, this uh, presentation uh, and the project. I have a background uh, myself uh, with uh, project assessments of both fixed links and other projects, uh, mainly road projects on the Western coast. And uh, I see uh, that we uh, might have some uh, possible improvements in the methods we use and we don't uh, um, incorporate all the, uh, the impacts that might arise of uh, such large projects. And also there is an increased interest on various uh, wider economic impacts which have been uh, raised in the recent years. But First, uh, I would like to say a little bit about what uh, fixed links might constitute. Uh, they 
do connect areas closer together. And especially the travel time between the two sides of the fjord uh, or between an island and the mainland is heavily reduced. Also, the flexibility is uh, improved quite a lot. You can go, you can travel whenever you want. It's open 24 7, while the ferry uh, connection is mainly closed. Um, uh, apart from the departure times. And uh, during night, uh, many of the ferry connections are, are not open. And these large um, increases in accessibility and flexibility may then have an impact on the society in the region. And to give you an example of this, I, I present uh, one of the cases we have studied. This is from uh, uh, two fixed link projects close to Stavanger. Uh, one of them is uh, Ranese, uh, which is to the west, and uh, Finne to up in the northeast corner. Before they uh, had a ferry connection, which, which uh, gave a travel time between the city of Stavanger, which is in the southwest corner of the picture, uh, on, with uh, two and a half hours to Ranesay and three hours to Finne. In 92, Sorry, in 1992, uh, uh, Ranfast opened with uh, two tunnels connecting Ranese to uh, the mainland with Stavanger. And the travel time then uh, re was reduced from between the city of Stavanger and the Ranese from two and a half hours to 25 minutes. And also, Finne uh, got a travel time reduction from three hours to one and a half hour due to a much shorter uh, ferry connection between the and Finland. And then in 2009, Finland also got a fixed link connection, which uh, reduced the travel time furthermore to 50 minutes to the city center. So a fixed link here might uh, give quite large travel time reductions. Today, when we uh, assess these projects, uh, we use the, uh, the transport, uh, regional transport models. One of the vital inputs to uh, that model is population. Because population is the main uh, uh, transport demand factor for the model. And the population data is uh, received from Statistics Norway and prepared for the model. And the prognosis we use for future uh, scenarios in years, they are fixed between uh, scenarios. So uh, the population on islands and on the mainland are the same, uh, regardless of uh, a ferry connection or you build a new fixed link to a, an island, for instance. So you don't have any project-specific development in the population data. The, the thing, the uh, factors uh, which uh, they take into account when they do the prognosis of population is, first of all, birth rate and death rate, uh, and immigration and emigration. 
and that's on a macro scale. And then when you uh, uh, divide the development into future years between uh, uh, between the different municipalities, you take into account the development in the previous years. So the areas that uh, have a, the largest development before will also get the, the biggest development later on in the prognosis. So land use effects uh, due to uh, a, a fixed link project or other uh, transport projects are not accounted for. That might give a bias uh, in the traffic demand that you get from the uh, transport model. And that might also uh, give biased uh, cost benefit analysis for, uh, for the, uh, the project. So what we want to look more into in uh, our PhDs are how population forecasts, uh, can they be made more project specific? And if this can improve the model accuracy. So we have, you get a loop between the transport model and also uh, feedback. Uh, you get an improve, improved accessibility from the fixed link project which might affect the land use and uh, land development. And then also that will give uh, a slightly different population movement, which then give new population uh, data, which will be fed back into the transport model. And we have tried to uh, look at what how this uh, have been, uh, what effects have, uh, have happened in previous uh, fixed link projects. And uh, then we have done uh, case studies of uh, several projects. And the research questions we have used then is uh, how these fixed links might affect the society on the islands. And furthermore, if there are differences based on the case characteristics in the uh, magnitudes of the changes. And if we see changes both in uh, every case or if it might be dependent on the case characteristics. We have looked at uh, a total of 11 cases along the western coast from Stavanger up to uh, west of uh, Trondheim. And one of uh, the parameters we've used uh, to, to uh, look at the characteristics are the distance to cities. If the uh, cases are close to cities or further away from larger cities and in more rural areas. And we also focus mainly on the connected island, since uh, that gives us a, a good uh, area of influence to look at the changes. And to uh, to uh, investigate the changes that happens on the island, we cannot uh, just look at. Uh, we need to compare it to a to a development that would have happened if you don't get the fixed link. But we can't use the island itself. We have to use. Uh, 
some other uh, cases to uh, other similar areas to find um, something to uh, simulate how the changes would have been if the pervert still operates and the fixed link hadn't been uh, hadn't been built. So what we have done, we have compared the development to uh, similar islands within the same uh, county uh, or other places along the western coast, which have had a ferry connection to the mainland throughout the, uh, the period of analysis. Here is an example from uh, Atlantraustunnelen, which connects Avre to, to uh, Kristiansund. Then we have used some other areas around the uh, project, which uh, still have a fair connection to the mainland. This is a uh, the method we have done, we have used then, is the difference in difference uh, method. Then we have the affected area, which is the island we investigate. And then we look at how in the uh, we have to find a control area, which is the other uh, islands, to find islands which which have. Uh, almost the same development prior to the fixed link opening. And then we look at how, uh, how much more development you get in the, uh, on the island that get a fixed link compared to the control area, which then gives us a different a DID value, which is, uh, could be said to be a percentage point extra development, which can be explained of the fixed link being built and opened. When we look at the population, we don't uh, we didn't find uh, quite the same. Uh, Good control groups from similar islands. So then we used uh, the total uh, population in the county and looked at how that how the uh, the county uh, population developed in the years after opening. And then we uh, also ex uh, or, uh, use the simulated trend to have a proxy for the, uh, the development if a fixed link wouldn't have been built in the affected area. So a bit about the results from the study. Uh, we have looked at both traffic uh, growth and uh, population and housing prices and also a bit about commuting. I'll go into some of these now. And uh, first, we can look at uh, the traffic growth. Here's from uh, Ranfast, which I presented previous, uh, which is the one close to Stavanger. Before 92, when uh, before the project opened, you had almost a, a slight uh, increase in the traffic on the ferry. But after the project opened, then you both get an immediate increase in the traffic, but also the, the traffic uh, growth was bigger in the years to, yeah. after the opening. And in 2006, the, um, the toll collection ended. So then you got an even, you got also a, 
immediate uh, increase and also the traffic growth increased quite lots more in the years to come up to now so it seems like uh, it's it's not only that uh, the thing you, that you get a fixed link and a shorter distance to the city but there is also something you uh, something more happening that might be explained by an increase in population or in firms uh, moving to the island. And when we look at the population growth, you see a similar pattern. Here it is, I presented a uh, the developments in uh, for the years after opening of the fixed link and uh, with the additional growth that can be uh, related to the fixed link then you see uh, the same pattern as uh, with the traffic growth that you get an increase an additional growth in the population up until uh, the uh, toll collection uh, ended and then the area got even more um, uh, popular for settlement and new people uh, moved to the islands and I also included another uh, project uh, which is uh, Hitra Tunnelen, situated a bit west of uh, Trondheim. That's a, an example of a more rural area. Um, and then you see in the uh, 12 up to 13 years after the opening, you didn't get the, uh, the development in the population. But after the toll ended, uh, after 14 years, then you also see that uh, Hitra got an uh, increase in the population, which uh, can be related to the fixed link. And some of the same pattern you can see also when we look at the housing price growth. It seems like uh, the, uh, the housing prices uh, grew a lot uh, after or due to the fixed link, which can uh, be related to the increased demand for housing on the island, and also more uh, more newer houses were built on the island and a uh, more variety of houses were also built. For uh, Ranfast, it was uh, much uh, agriculture and uh, on the island previous to uh, the fixed link. But afterwards, you, you get uh, more uh, both uh, uh, more dwellings of both uh, detached houses and also you see uh, more apartments now in the later years. So that might uh, also contribute to the big increase in housing prices. And we see that the population development for all the, uh, the projects. Then the different uh, colors uh, present the different years after opening. You see from the, let's see if I get the, for Ranfast, for instance, you have a large increase uh, from year to year in the, especially after the toll ended. But the same pattern uh, you have also on the other uh, 
projects uh, close to cities. Our, um, the, play, the projects close to cities are to the left in the uh, graph. So you can see that they have the largest development. But we also see from the more rural uh, cases that they also have, a, have a, an impact on the population development, but a slightly lower impact. And to explain uh, where the differences in uh, this development, we also looked at where the people are moving from and to the island. Uh, for the projects close to cities, a large population, uh, proportion comes from the nearby municipalities. That might be explained by uh, new residential areas are unlocked and uh, and you get uh, you can move to the island and still work on the mainland and in the city and you get uh, and there is also a large difference in the housing prices between the the city and on the mainland and the the islands and uh, it ranges from 40 to 80 percent lower in, uh, in price per square meter. For the other cases, uh, there is a longer distance uh, of moving and also the difference in the square meter price between the mainland and the island is much lower and also almost no difference at all. So uh, you don't have the same effect that you can move to the island and get a get a cheaper uh, or build a house there with the lower price. So the conclusion from this uh, this project uh, or this uh, case studies. The fixed length is absolutely uh, area specific and it, uh, it seems to depend on the characteristics of the mainland. It's differences between the projects which are close to the cities compared to the more rural care cases. The second finding is that the toll collection reduces uh, the growth a bit. And you see that from uh, the projects where the toll collection has ended that the development uh, is quite a lot larger after the toll collection ended than during the toll collection period. And of course, as I've presented, population development is uh, affected by the fixed links and uh, the islands get uh, are more uh, do experience more uh, population development. So a bit about the limitations of the study as well. Uh, as I've said earlier, we are focused only on the uh, island and the effects on the island. But uh, we also had to look more at the redistributional effects and to see what happens on the mainland and on surrounding areas and surrounding islands. And I 
there might be a, a slight bias uh, when you, we uh, compare to the control groups that the islands uh, that get a fixed link might get a larger uh, proportion of the growth and get some of the development that would then uh, happen on the other islands surrounding uh, the mainland. And also some of the projects uh, are built almost at the same time, so uh, and close to the same city. Um, at least uh, that's the case for uh, Bergen, which you have both uh, Aske and uh, Nordland, which uh, opened in the same year, if I remember correctly. So then, uh, then uh, both of them would get uh, would uh, would get a more uh, possible, uh, would get some of the growth that might otherwise happen in the city. So then uh, in the end I will uh, look a bit, uh, I will present some of the uh, other things we are working on now and what we're doing in the future. Uh, we are also looking a bit about how the uh, accessibility uh, is affected when we build a fixed link. I'm working on a study now which uh, looks more into the assumptions we use in uh, waiting time for the ferry. And also we have a study going on on the inconvenience of uh, being dependent of the ferry and what are the explanation, explanation factors of the inconvenience. Also, uh, we have a, we have worked a lot on uh, firm effects, both uh, productivity previously, and uh, now we are working on uh, firm movement and, uh, and if uh, firm, and look about uh, how firms are affected by fixed link and if they move due to the uh, accessibility changes from fixed links. And we're also planning to do uh, more research on the population uh, changes and see how uh, the redistributional effects are and do a similar study to what we are doing now for firms and see what affects uh, the choices of uh, where people are moving. If they uh, how much can be explained by the increased accessibility from, uh, for instance, fixed links. And the research we are doing is with a goal in the end of, of uh, of uh, having a basis for a uh, land use transport interaction model, which is a bit much uh, what, what I uh, present in uh, the figure to the right. When you have uh, the transport system, which uh, give a traffic uh, demand due to from the transport models, and uh, the accessibility changes might give different land use in the region. And that might affect the population and fur movements, which feed back into the transport model with new population and firm data. But we are not quite 
uh, there yet, but uh, it's something we're working on. In, and I want to do more about uh, in the future. So, just to sum up, uh, we have already done a lot of uh, of research, and uh, this is a list of the uh, papers we have already published and presented on uh, various conferences. And uh, we also a few uh, publications under review now. Both uh, on the waiting time uh, for ferries and and uh, some uh, study on the changes in housing prices, for instance. And we are also working now on uh, the uh, on the firm relocation. Uh, to see the, how empirical data fits in a model. And uh, the perception of uh, the ferry services, as I mentioned before. With, and we are also planning to do the uh, some on uh, residential location to look at the redistributional effects. OK. and. Uh, that's uh, the end of uh, my presentation. OK. Thank you for a very nice presentation. Thank um, you. You've really done a lot of interesting uh, research and uh, topics. Uh, we will now open up for questions and comments. Uh, you can either ask uh, your questions in writing uh, or in uh, spoken form. Um, I did. Uh, I wrote down some questions, but uh, you kind of answered them uh, <laughs> during your <laughs> presentation. <laughs> okay. So um, that was nice. Anyone? Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is uh, Chelhova Belsvik. I'm working on the Bjornafjorden bridge, yeah. and I'm. Um, <clears throat> I will say I find it very interesting uh, the presentation you have now. Thank you. And, uh, it's interesting to see how the islands uh, in the south near, near um, Stavanger develops uh, after the fixed link uh, implementation. Uh, now we have uh, started the uh, Rogfast uh, project, and that is also a fixed link uh, situation. And uh, together with uh, the Hordfast uh, project, uh, we actually have uh, a fixed link between two large cities at the west coast. Uh, do we have a, a possibility to estimate the effects in the way that you have done uh, to the islands around uh, Bergen and Stavanger? Well, we don't uh, have any we cannot uh, estimate the effects now. We have focused so far on what have happened on previous uh, locations, but uh, that's one of the things we would like to uh, work a bit more on, and especially if we in the future can get uh, a kind of Luti model, as uh, I mentioned. That would be a very interesting uh, thing to look more at. But I do think that we, we will certainly see a development along the E39 between Bergen and uh, Stavanger. We see that we see a bit of that already in uh, Os, when we now, uh, which is just south of Bergen, when we knew when we. Uh, Build the, uh, the tunnel, a new tunnel uh, between Bergen and uh, Os, and you get a lot of uh, development and uh, new houses in Os because it's close to Bergen. 
And I guess we, you can uh, have uh, some of the same when Holdfast also connects uh, Tisnes and Stort further south. So uh, I will certainly think that you can get some uh, some development also there. Yeah, thank you. It was um, a good answer so far, but uh, as you say, an investigation around these issues would be uh, very relevant for these two uh, uh, fixed link uh, projects. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Thanks a lot. Mm. Uh, I have a question from uh, Chashti. Uh, do you see it? Or shall I read it? Uh, no, I don't see it. Okay. Uh, sh she asks, uh, can you estimate how much toll reduces growth? Are there limits? Well, we haven't uh, looked that much into tolls specifically. So uh, I can't say it uh, now, but uh, it seems that uh, they do limit the growth to a certain extent at least. But uh, as uh, I, I showed from uh, uh, the Ramfast population development at least, uh, you have a lot of uh, land it seems like the growth is uh, limit has been limited during the toll collection. So some uh, some of the growth is uh, not uh, uh, reduced during the toll collection, but uh, I I can't say uh, anything about how much it is. At least. Could I just follow up on that? Yeah. Uh, because I saw when you presented uh, the 5, 10, 15 and 20 year uh, yeah. figure. Uh, because you could see normally you have toll roads for 15 years. Yeah. Uh, and I think that the 20 year period, you can always see that the 20 year is much higher uh, yeah, also than the 15 years. and. We also know from some of the studies that you have done that just before the toll road uh, is taken down, you see an effect a little bit before and then the growth really kicks off. Yeah. So I think if you look at the 15 and 20 year in this uh, diagram, mm. it should really show us something about you know, the effect of toll roads. Yeah, it uh, it shows us and uh, some of the effects of uh, the toll road, and you see that, uh, for instance, also for the uh, oh, I can't, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see from uh, Hitra and uh, Freya, then the big impact happens after the uh, toll uh, was taken away. Freya, That's because okay. it was built a little bit after uh, Hydra Tunnel. So, so the 15 years are after the toll collection is ended. And you see uh, this, a similar thing for Krifast and uh, also for Nordalandsbrua and and the other cases actually. So there is an effect, and but we haven't uh, digged into how big that effect is. But yes, there is absolutely an effect, and they uh, do seem to uh, to start a year or two before the toll uh, collection ends. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Does anybody else have a question or comment? No? 
no. Okay, thank you again for your presentation, Stig. Um, thank you. Uh, next presentation in society will be uh, next Friday, where Alexander Hellawick from Chalmers will talk about accessibility induced pattern in urban activity. So uh, just follow up on that one. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah.